Hello, Young Math Padawans. It's Mrs. Angel with your lesson for today on solving equations using the distributive property tool. So as a quick reminder, the distributive property basically states that you're going to multiply everything inside of the group by what's outside to essentially free the constant. So looking at expression number one, we have four times the group of x minus five. We're going to multiply everything inside of the group by 4, and that will free our constant out of the group. So starting with x, 4 times x is just 4x, and 4 times a minus 5 becomes a minus 20. Now from here, you'll notice that the group is gone. My constant has become a minus 20, whereas it used to be a minus 5, but at least I now have two terms and my constant is free. So the simplified version of expression number one is 4x minus 20. Five times two x, so five times two is 10, so five times two x would be 10x. And five times a positive one would be a positive five. So now that I have two terms and my constant is broken free out of the group, I know that this expression is fully simplified. Three times six is 18, and three times eight minus five x, or negative five x, will become minus 15x. Again, my constant is three. And I have two terms, so I know that expression three is fully simplified. For examples with solving, we're going to look at two different methods. In method one, we're going to apply the distributive property first, then use our properties of equality. But in method two, we're actually going to look at how you can solve the same equation without using distributive property and only using our properties of equality. Let's start with method one. As always, I start by putting a line down the middle of the equal sign. And since the variable in this equation is on the left, I am not concerned with the 12 on the right. Now, I notice here that my constant, minus 5, is trapped inside of a group. So before I can do anything, I need that constant to be broken free. To do that, one of the tools I can use is called the distributive property, or DP for short. To do that, I would multiply everything inside the group by what's outside of the group for. 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times a minus 5 is a minus 20, and equals 12 is not affected. Now essentially I have a basic two-step equation, and my constant is free, though it has become a minus 20, whereas before it was a minus 5. Now normally we would check at this point, but instead of checking, we're actually going to solve this equation again using a different order of steps. Again, I'm going to start the same way by putting a line down the middle of my equal sign. Now this time, instead of starting with the distributive property, I'm going to start by looking at this as a complex or tougher two-step equation. Since this is essentially four times the group of x minus five, I can think to myself, which property of equality do I use to undo multiplication? And the answer to that is division property of equality, or DPO. So if I were to look at this as I just want to get 4 times x minus 5 down to 1 times x minus 5, I would divide both sides by 4. Now what that does is create a big 1 out of the 4s, and now I'm left with whatever was inside of my group, which in this case was x minus 5. And 12 divided by 4 is 3. Now, Since x is already by itself, I'm done and I don't have to apply any other tools. Since we ended up with x equals 8 using both methods, it doesn't matter which one you use. So which one did you prefer? In equation two, we're going to do the same thing. Method one, distributive property first. Method two, only properties of equality. Let's look at method one. As always, I start by putting a line down the middle of my equal sign. And in this equation, I notice that the variable is on the right side of the equation, so I am not concerned with the other side. So let's start with our first method of applying the distributive property to get rid of the group and break our constant free. So, 5 times 2x and 5 times a positive 1. 5 times 2x is 10x, and 5 times a positive 1 is a positive 5. And the negative 25 on the other side is not affected. 
So instead of checking, let's solve the same equation again using only properties of equality. Starting with my line down the middle of the equal sign, this time, instead of the distributive property, I'm going to start off with division, or depot, and divide both sides by 5 to create that big 1 factor. Again, the 5 and the divided by 5 creates 1, and then I'm left with whatever is inside of the group, which in this case is 2x plus 1. So going all the way through, negative 25 divided by 5 is negative 5, and 2x plus 1 is on the other side. And negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. 2x divided by 2 is 1x. Since we ended up with the same solution in both methods, it really doesn't matter which one you use. So which method do you prefer? When distributing with a negative number, the important thing to remember is that everything is going to change, meaning that positives are going to become negative, negatives become positives, addition and subtraction, it's all going to change. Let's look at example one. This negative four times a positive x is going to cause that to become a negative four x. x went from being positive to now being negative. And this negative four times a minus five well, if I multiply a negative and a minus, then that operation is equivalent to adding. So it's actually going to change this operation into a positive or a plus 20. So multiplying by a negative is going to change everything inside of the parentheses. And our simplified value here is negative 4x plus 20. negative 10x minus 5. Everything that was originally in the parentheses had to change. So negative 18 plus 15x. It's important to note that if you have to ever distribute a negative, everything is going to change. If you forget about that change, then you're probably going to make a mistake along the way. Our first equation that we're going to deal with is negative 4 times the group of x minus 5 equals 12. I'm going to start by putting a line down the middle of my equal sign. In method one here, we're actually going to use the distributive property first, then follow it up with our properties of equality. So I do see that, again, my variable's on the left side, that's where I'm looking, and I'm distributing a negative four on that side. So again, I'm thinking everything is going to change. So negative four times a positive x becomes a negative four x and negative four times a minus five, that changes to plus, and four times five is 20. So the first step we used, the first tool we used was our distributive property, but since we distributed a negative, everything had to change. Now instead of checking, which is what we would normally do, we're gonna solve this same equation again, this time only using our properties of equality. As always, I start by putting a line down the middle of the equal sign. Now to avoid having to deal with the changes that come from distributing a negative, you can always use division property instead. I can start off my equation with depot and divide both sides by negative four. Whatever is being multiplied must also be divided. Now that creates a big one here and leaves us with x minus five and on the other side, positive 12 divided by negative 4 becomes negative 3. And I still end up with x equals 2. Since you end up with x equals 2 in both methods, it really doesn't matter which one you choose. So did you prefer distributing first or depot first? Looking at equation two, we're going to start the same way, lying down the middle of the equal sign, and starting off with our distributive property. But be careful, we are distributing a negative here, negative five. So everything is going to change. Negative five times positive two becomes negative 10. That positive became a negative. And negative five times a plus one, that's going to change into a minus, and five times one is five. 
So again, everything inside of the parentheses had to change. X. So again, instead of checking, let's just solve it using a different series of steps and see if we end up with the same thing. After I put down the line in the middle of my equal sign, I'm going to start off this equation with division, D-P-O-E, and divide both sides by negative 5, since that's what's being multiplied. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is 1, and I'm left with 2x plus 1 on the right. Negative 25 divided by negative 5 is positive 5. And once again, I'm left with positive 2 equals x. Again, since we ended up with the same solution, it doesn't matter which method you use. So did you prefer method 1, distributing first, or method 2, just using properties of equality? Now it's your turn. You're going to solve this last equation on your own and check your solution when you're done. It's your choice whether you want to use the distributive property first or just use properties of equality. However, once you solve it one time, then you're going to solve it again using a different method. So if you did division property first, in the second time around, you're going to try distributive property. Over here, when you're done, you're going to explain what you did differently in the second time versus the first. Now, I'm not going to solve this equation with you. However, I will tell you that the solution to the equation is x equals 1. So no matter if you use division property or distributive property, you should end up with x equals 1. And if you do, you know that you did your work correctly. On this last page, you're going to solve the equation below and check your solution. You can either use distributive property first or you can start off with depot. Whatever you choose to use, you're going to solve it again using the other method. Now I'm not going to help you through this one, but I will tell you that you should end up with a solution of x equals 1. If you end up with x equals 1, then chances are you did your steps correctly.